This is a quick overview of the uh, Revit Sheet import functionality I've been working on recently. So here we have a model from SEH, which is the Putney Junior School WC project. And uh, what we can see here is there are a number of sheets. If I just scroll down, there's a whole lot of sheets. And if I go to our exciting docs ribbon menu and click Publish Sheets, we'll see that obviously those sheets currently aren't in docs. Now. One of the uh, challenges here, if I just select one of the sheets and zoom in down here and we just edit this family and go to the document number, we can see here, if I just click on that and then say edit, that the, uh, the label uh, associated with the document number here is actually not just a one-to-one -one mapping of a particular parameter but it's actually built up of seven parameters in this instance um, with you know either uh, suffixes or, or again in this instance prefixes separating those particular parameter values so it's basically uh, project code originator code zone which uh, we would know as, uh, as volume level type role and file number so what we need to do is to have some mechanism where we can capture that information and then uh, migrate that metadata into docs as a single string. So if we just come out of that and then just zoom out slightly. Right, so what we can do if I go into the docs ribbon menu and then select about we'll uh, see our regular about box but if I hold down control and shift and then go into about what we'll see is we've got a hidden button here uh, called import sheets. So if I just click on that then that brings up our uh, import sheet user interface. So what it's done here is determine what class uh, we're using for Revit Sheets based on the uh, Excitec Docs admin utility um, settings that are already configured. So here we've got the drawing class and down here in the rows we've got all of the uh, property definitions associated with that particular class. So just scroll down and again here we've got their um, property IDs, the data type and uh, how we've or how we intend to map it so all of them currently aren't mapped. The properties in bold are mandatory or required properties so we need to create mappings for those at the very least in order to create objects within docs. So what I can begin to do is to start creating mappings to bring those sheets in. So if I click on document number uh, which was the challenging one because it's actually made up of a number of different parameter values. What we can do here, we can say that we're going to create a parameter mapping and we'll add a parameter here and we'll select project code and then we'll add a text string of a dash and then we'll add originator dash and then zone or uh, volume as we'd know it dash and then level dash and then type dash then roll dash and then finally the file number so we click OK to that and what we can see here now is that uh, that has now been selected as mapping type parameter and the mapping is project code originator zone level type role file number uh, and the fact that these are in uh, less than greater than braces suggests that these are parameter values. So what I can do now, I can map project ID and again I could map that to a parameter if I wanted to but um, I've already created a project in docs um, for this so I can just click a value mapping. So that now gives me a list of all the uh, projects in docs that I can just select the uh, PUTWC Putney Junior School WC project. Uh, and I'll do a similar thing here for company, so I'll just say Excitec for example. Uh, and then description, so I'll create a parameter mapping for description and that would be the sheet name. So we'll leave title 1, title 2, title 3 and here we've got volume ID so that would be mapped to uh, zone in this particular model uh, but of course zone uh, in terms of what data is in the sheets uh, is likely to be ZZ or, or what have you. So you can still map that so if I just map that to zone 
the import utility will try to resolve that based upon whatever you map to so it will uh, cascade into the relevant object and then try and map one of the values in that object or sub object uh, to determine what the mapping should be of course what I could do is I could actually select a value here and I could say no applicable levels but these particular mappings here are specific to this particular project so if I was to change the project now that uh, level ID mapping would disappear because it would be invalid for that particular project so let's go back to Putney um, and what I'll do in this instance is actually map this to level parameter okay and then we've got type and role so again I'll just select values for those so 2D drawing and uh, once I've done that I can go to the next tab sheets and this lets out all the sheets in this um, Revit model but these are just the sheets that aren't in docs so any in, in docs uh, or currently in docs are not listed here because they're kind of irrelevant from that point of view so the tick boxes uh, denote whether we're going to import these sheets or not uh, the sheet number is coming from Revit sheet name is coming from Revit status uh, is uh, we'll see as we, we, we move on through the process and the columns here uh, represent all of the metadata associated with the uh, class mapped to Revit sheets so these are all of the properties and as you can see they're currently empty but what we can do then is to actually say validate data so what that will do is it will take the mapping settings we've uh, set up on the previous tab and it will try and populate the columns that we've mapped based upon uh, a combination of the data from uh, Revit parameters and value mappings so what it's telling me here is that I've not mapped one of the required um, properties so role description so I can come into here and I can say architect so I'm just going to create another couple of mappings um, here we've got revision and I have to know that that is currently current revision and we've also got sequence number which is a new property we've created to cater for people who don't want to use BS1192 uh, naming on their sheets so we'll just map that to file number in this instance and again you can map uh, as many or as few as long as you uh, map the required properties then uh, you should go without a hitch um, if they're just text values then you can just map them to a, a simple string um, and uh, you can map other ones to values I think some of these have got values somewhere uh, 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 uh. target shared for example there we are so we've got the uh, suitability codes so moving on if I go to the sheets tab now and I click validate data that will go off and it will try and build and fill out those columns based on that data so here we've got the document number project ID company ID description as per the mapping so we just scroll along here it's successfully uh, resolved the volumes um, because I guess they're all ZZ but what we're seeing here actually that it was unable to resolve the lookup value from mapping here so uh, this would need to be addressed before importing those uh, it's pre-populated type description architect and if we just scroll along uh, revision and right along the end sequence number so I happen to know that the reason it didn't resolve these is because I've just created a new project for the Putney High School WC and that particular project doesn't have the required levels that we need so I'll create a new level and we'll call this ground floor and the level code in this instance is zero zero so again if I go back in now and if I just revalidate that what we'll see is that that's actually resolved those as ground floor and the the, the remaining three are actually the first floor so we'll just add a new level for that so that would be first floor zero one correct right so back into here revalidate it and there we are so it's not giving us any warnings we've uh, mapped the required or mandatory data 
But if we just look down now, the list here, the document number, we can see there are a few problems. So here we can see these three values here have got two dashes in a row, which means there must be some missing data here. So I'll just tick those off because uh, they'll need to be revisited. Uh, also, these two here seem to be missing a roll for some reason. And this one here is missing a lot of data. So let's just tick those off and we'll just go with the ones that look like they've got all of the relevant information. So what we do now, click import and that will chug through those. Okay, so that's they've all been imported and if I click on one of those, uh, site location plan for example, I've now got a view in docs button that I can just link straight to that. So there we are. And just maximize that. So we can see all the metadata's come in. So it's got the PUTC sorry, P U T W C uh S E H originator code, Z Z zone or level uh, volume, uh XX level, uh D R uh, type A role and then sequence number. So all been populated, company has been populated, uh, description, revision, and if we just scroll down. And what this has done at this stage is just created us a Revit placeholder, as you'd expect. And it's obviously linked the relevant objects of the company, level ID, no applicable level. Project ID, volume, or volumes. So it's all it's all there. So going back into Docs, what we uh, sorry Revit, what we can do, just close that down. If we just click on that uh, same sheet, that that should match exactly what we've got in Docs now, because uh, it's been concatenated and built up from the mappings that we've got. And if we want to, we could publish now to that particular placeholder if that was valid. So if we just find the location plan here, tick a PDF rendition, S0, and then we could just publish that. Alternatively, what you could do is you could drag over existing content uh, from their network drive or wherever it may reside. So let's just close that and then back into docs and I'll just click on the preview here so this really addresses option one I think in terms of what we are talking to SEH about in terms of what we can do with regard to importing Revit sheets from existing projects into docs as it stands. Uh, I'm sure we can do more regarding uh, options two and three, but that would really need detailed analysis of whatever data they've got. Uh, hopefully that was useful. Thank you very much.